leatherettes from the front of the camera Usually these are reasonably easy to remove. Um, decades of finger grease most likely percolating its way through the porous leatherette probably degrades the adhesive. So I'm very carefully sliding the scalpel blade down here. I don't want to flex this too much in case it cracks because as I said leatherettes can sometimes be brittle. Alright, that came off nicely. And it's mate on this side. If you slip when you're getting the leatherettes off and poke your scalpel through, um, it's usually not the end of the world. Once leatherettes are all firmly glued back in position, Cuts and tears tend to disappear largely, particularly fairly sharp cuts. And even where there's slightly more damage than that, you can fill the void with black wax crayon. You can actually melt it in with a tip of a hot knife or something, much, much like people do to with wax sticks when they're dealing with scratches on antique wooden furniture. Right, that's off. Now as I said, that leather it's folded back at the corner there. But I expect that'll glue back down flat. I don't really expect to see any problem with that. At the front of the camera, normally I remove the front control rings first. Now there are three screws holding the front control rings in place. Two of them are the same length, here and here. This one's a longer screw. Of the two screws that are the same length, if you chew the head up on one, when you put it back in the camera, put it in this position, put a blob of red paint on it, and no one will be any the wiser, in fact it helps. So there's the front control rings. They're a little bit grimy looking, they'll certainly need to be cleaned. I don't put those through the cleaner, they get cleaned manually. Got a pinion here. And this one on the shaft, they couple the meter to the front to control rings. And now we have four screws that hold the front panel to the main body casting. This uh, disassembly job has gone quite smoothly, uh, but that's not uncommon. 
see if we can unhook that. Now yeah, that was interesting, I heard something go snap, I think it was just the mirror going up. I'll take out the spacer washers, in this case we have two in each position. That tells me this is a relatively early reflex S. Later reflex S's would have had three of these cupped spacer washers in each position at the front of the camera. That one just fell down there in the body, we'll have him out. And we'll retrieve my meter cord. And there's the drum. Put that cord to one side, that looks fine. That was silk, I think, that cord. It's very, very strong. Um, I don't think they break much by themselves. I'm sure they can do, and they do. But generally speaking, a lot of the cases the cord is broken. They've been broken in someone's failed repair attempt, typically when they've taken the front rings off, put them back in the wrong position. Moved the adjuster here at the bottom of the camera and they've reached the end of travel for the cord and as a result it snaps. So I'm looking at the front of the camera body here now, looking at the mirror, it's a bit dusty, nothing unusual, otherwise quite good. The mirror, the capping plate looks all looks good. All that stuff seemed to move quite well. Did I retrieve the small spring from the base of the camera? No, I didn't. There's a small spring here, you might just see it, that sits in this position and it holds this catch down in the body for the uh, capping plate. It's most important that you don't lose that, otherwise you can end up with a camera that sort of works but doesn't work correctly all the time, or only works when you hold it in a certain position. Here's another feature of an early Reflex S. This is our tensioner here. You can see it is a spring tensioner, but it's tensioned on this thing that slides up and down on the post. On later reflex S's, this is a swinging arm with a very strong spring on the pivot. On earliest Retina reflex S cameras, this is a manual adjustment and it's usually accessible through a hole in the front plate. So this is not the earliest of the reflex S's, but fairly early. Just checking the action of the back. Look at that catch, see if there's any sign of corrosion. It doesn't appear to be. Probably a touch of molybdenum on some, or something like that on that clip and it'll pop in nicely. So this, these components certainly need to be cleaned. Typically I start with the body. While the mechanical components that have been removed from the body are in the degreaser, I usually start cleaning up all the body work. And I start typically by scraping off this old adhesive and I'm just using the back edge of the scalpel blade there to remove the bulk of this. I don't want to scour up the body casting too much of course but I just want to get rid of the bulk of that old adhesive and it'll be the back of the leatherette too and some of this will be corrosion products where the alloy casting is corroded as a result of moisture percolating through the leatherettes to the metal body. So I'll clean that rubbish up. Once I've got all this stuff, the bulk of it scraped off, then usually that cleans up quite well with um, a bit of acetone. Uh, Naphtha usually doesn't make a hell of a dent in it, but acetone certainly will and allows, allows you to clean this surface up. And I just, you don't need to go overboard, you just really need to make sure there are no lumps and bumps and no oils or greases left on the surface before you glue your leatherettes back. So, looking at this now, seeing if there's anything particularly notable about it, it just looks very greasy. 
I'm checking the action here of these the release there's a little bit of stick uh, stiffness stickiness here so to deal with that I'm actually going to disassemble this and remove all these control arms from the body that's a bit of a task it's a task all of its own um, I might do that now alright dismantling all of these components first thing I'm going to start off with is by removing this spring from the front here now that spring is quite light fairly delicate but most of all it's very easily lost I usually take it off early and replace it late because otherwise it'll likely get lost or damaged I'll just release the mirror that's cocked down there there are two screws at the bottom of the body here underneath this curved plate and I'm going to remove that curved plate that's just a baffle so I want that out of the body while I work on the rest of it this component here, this is the latch that holds the mirror down in the cocked position until you fire the ship for the viewing allow viewing I'm going to loosen that com component off at the base of the camera there's a lock screw running in in this direction there's an adjustment screw here sometimes these move nicely without a lot of fighting and other times they don't if the lock screw has been done up extra tight it will have been driven into the threads on the other component and will not want to turn and more importantly the other component won't want to turn either That screw's damaged, but it came out. Or backed up anyway, that's the main thing. Let's have a look at this, see if this will... That will turn. Good. I can screw that right out. And lift this component right out of the body. Now there's a small spacer washer on the end of the arm at this point. It's important not to lose that. So far so good. Be careful when you're handling the body at this stage. When the mirror is in the up position you'll see it sticks forward of the camera body. So if you press it down on the bench you could damage it. So be careful about that and in here I've got two screws I'm just slackening those off slightly one doesn't want to move so I'm going to have to encourage that I'm going to remove the door now just so I've got better access to this without having to fight it's held to the body with three screws nickel plated screws I'll put that back to one side and the screws can go over there and that just gives me better access to this without fighting I'm going to have to get one of these screws loose and I'm going to use a hammer and screwdriver and give that a couple of taps
basically I'm just going to use this screwdriver like an impact driver to drive on, hit that screw and turn it at the same time. It only took a light tap and that came loose. So I can slacken, that, slacken those two screws off slightly. And what I'm trying to do is loosen the bracket here enough that I can start sliding these, this component past it. That's our front lever. Put that to one side. And it's spring. Each of these levers has a return spring. It's important that each lever gets its correct return spring. On some models, the springs are quite different in tension. That part went very smoothly. I'll slacken those screws off completely now. And here's the guide plate that clamped everything together. And you can see it's quite sticky with old grease. I can lift the center lever out of position and take its return spring and then there's the lever at the rear I was just fighting to get past those screw heads there I'll just remove those screws entirely I think They don't need to be in the body anymore anyway. Here's our third lever. Now this lever operates the capping plate. Its job is to press the capping plate down to the operating position and its return spring. Now I'm looking at these. These springs all appear to be very much the same. Uh, but I'm not going to get caught by mixing them up. Alright, so that part's all done. When I go to put this back, what I'm going to do is clean away any old grease uh, and dust from these positions and I'll be checking these arms carefully to make sure that they are straight, that they're not bent and when they go back together I'll check that they move freely, that they move freely on the shafts and that they'll pop back up into position promptly. Just latch that capping plate down out of the way for the moment. Now the reflex mirror, this is quite good but it's quite dusty and I want to clean that. I can't clean it in the body and surface silvered mirrors you do not want to touch the front surface you will damage the mirror. So I'll clean that in the ultrasonic cleaner which means I've got to get it off its tray. So Let's see what I can do. First I need to make sure it's not glued down to the tray. No, it appears free. I'll put a pair of tweezers down there to lift it above the front lip. Slide my scalpel blade in at the back and just push it forward slightly. Now I can Put a screwdriver in the back behind that mirror and slide it out of the tray. Now I can just pull it out from my fingers holding carefully by the edges. And that I want to clean so I'll pop it there where I can pick it up easily. I have a somewhat modified clip that I can use to hold the mirror. Now it'll hold it there and now I can clean this in the ultrasonic cleaner without touching the front surface at all. It never needs much, it only needs a few minutes in some warm water with some dishwashing detergent and that will clean that right up. 
and it's handy to have that mirror out of the way while I'm working on the rest of the camera because it's very easy to inadvertently stick your dirty big greasy finger on that mirrored surface and, um, and it can be a terrible thing to try and clean up. So our camera body here now is empty. I'm going to clean all this rubbish off here before I clean my components up. Zoom you back out. Before I clean up these components, these levers, and put them back in the body. First I'll get rid of all this rubbish. I'll have a look at the back door. That appears to be quite good. I notice that there's a hint of corrosion on the edge of that catch there. Nothing dramatic. Um, shouldn't cause me any problems. So, I'll get to it and I'll scrape all this rubbish off, clean the body casting, and then start putting the mirror control levers and so forth back in place. Meanwhile, the other mechanical components are in the degreasel, and that's in, they're just soaking away at the moment. While, that, while I'll get this part done, then move on to the shutter after that sometime. Just about to reassemble the mirror components on this Reflex S, and of course I have the camera back off to access those components more easily, and I noticed that there's a bright spot here, and I thought, what's that bright spot? What's going on there? Well, it turns out that there's a dent, a quite a substantial dent in the camera back, and that's actually pushed the back forward at this point, and that is borne onto the, the body casting somewhere, I would say. So that needs to be pushed back out, so I'm just going to take a hammer and a little piece of wood and basically just thump that back out flat. I'll show you and catch that in the light, you can probably see this, the, the length of that, that dent and you can certainly see it on the outside there and you can, I can feel it when I rub my finger across it back shortly. Alright, I've given that a little bit of encouragement and uh, it's gone. Basically there's no dent there now, that's back as it was. So that's a handy thing. I was a bit, dis bit concerned when I saw that there. I thought, well, that spoils an otherwise good camera back. So that's fine. So we've got a little tiny patch of missing paint there. That, I would, honestly, i just fill that in with a piece of black felt pen. It serves absolutely, there's no, no problem with that. Uh, it's not like it's going to cause a light reflection onto the film anywhere. You can see that we have other bright components, those rivets there. So that would cause no problem at all. And I would just disguise that with a touch of a uh, marker pen. That'll soon go away. There we go, you'd hardly know. And that had obviously been, had been pushed in far enough that it had actually run on those sprocket shaft, the, the sprocket, the teeth, had actually been rubbing into it. I'm looking to see if there's any damage to them. I don't think there would be. No. They'd just been milling a tiny slot in here as the shaft revolved. Interesting. Wasn't expecting to find that. I'm about to start reassembling the mirror and cap and plate operating levers. I've got everything cleaned now and so I've just got to start putting everything back in the body. The body as you can see is all clean and tidy ready for the reassembly. So I'll start with the rearmost of the levers and I'm just wiping a thin smear of molybdenum paste on that lever on the back face and the front face and on both edges. And I'll put a spring on the post down here in the body. And I should be able to lift this into position. That 
sitting loosely in position there. And I'll move to the next one, the middle lever. Basically I'll do the same. White molybdenum paste on the back. On the front, at this section here in particular, that's where it is held by the clamps. And this should go into position too, without too much argument. So they're just sitting loosely in place. And here is the, the bracket that holds everything in place. And now I've got to get that in position. This is where it gets entertaining. Trying to maintain things in the correct positions. get this bracket correctly positioned. So you've got to hold the mirror up. If you let it fly to the top, it will displace the levers. If you let it, if you try and push it down, it'll displace the levers. You've got to hold it fairly neutral while you're doing this. I can't seem to get that seated correctly. I'm just a little bit too high there, I think. The problem is this, see this little recess at this point, that has to go around this boss where the hinge pin is on the capping plate. It's hard to get it tucked in there because it needs to be fitted around the levers and of course the levers don't really want to go. That's it. That bracket is sitting more or less correctly at the moment. If I hold that with my finger from the back, I should be able to see if I can line up the screw holes and put the screws back in. See if I can achieve that. Well, I could feel the tips of my tweezers against my finger when I put them down the hole there. So I know I'm more or less aligned. Amazing, I've got one of the screws in straight away. Well, I'll do the other one. It's in two. 
Okay, I can check those levers now and see if they appear to function. They do, they move smoothly, so I know that part's correct. That's good. So now I've got to do the front lever. And to allow me to do the front lever, I've got to slacken those screws off slightly so that this can be slid down between the front of this clamp and the casting. So you put your two rear levers in first with the bracket. When you've got them correctly positioned, I'll just slacken that, those screws off so I've got a bit of space here to get this arm down. Now, I want my spring and the front arm here, just like the others, wiper molybdenum on the back, wiper molybdenum on the front and the side edges and see if I can get this down into place. That needs to go down there, that looks good. If I tighten the screws up, will it all stay in place? Why is that not wanting to move? It's not quite in position. Yes, that moves freely now. The other two still move. One of them's tight, it must have moved slightly. Slacken those two screws off. That's better. Nip them up, see if everything moves. That moves, that moves, that moves. All the arms are moving smoothly. I'll just bring up this bracket at the back here to hold that capping plate down while I'm fighting with this so that it's not too much of a fight. Now am I any, in the right place here? Okay, so there's an arm here that needs to be forward of this thing and at the moment it's behind it. So I've got to undo, take this front arm out again and get that correct. I'll slacken these two screws off slightly. Now I need more than that. That lever's on the wrong side, nothing will work. That's better. And there's the lever I need to be at the front. That's better. If you think this looks like a very awkward job, you'd be quite, quite correct. It's a very awkward job. It's one that I don't enjoy doing. And um, you do when you need to do it. If there's no problem there, you leave well enough alone. In this case, I want to make sure that this camera is good for decades to come. Since it's 60 years old, it's worth going the extra mile. So far so good. Now I've got this piece to go in. This is the piece that holds the mirror in the uh, lockdown state ready so you can view. And to get this in I need to put this spacer washer back over that pin. Now that's often a thicker washer than this one, so there must have been some changes in the design at some stage. So 
So if I get that in the hole in the body at the bottom, get it started at least, I can probably run that screw down from the top, can I? That's not quite right, something wrong there. That's screwing in correctly. Can I get that arm um, coupled? I'll just run that down into position and then see where I need to be. It needs to finish somewhere like that. Okay, let's back it up. And see if I can get that arm on there. That's looking promising. It certainly looks high at that point. Let me wind that peak down a bit. Probably something like that. And when the shutter's triggered, this should pull down here, allows the mirror to flip up out of the way. It looks good. I think that'll do the job. A bit concerned about the shape of this arm. It seems to have a bit of a curve to it. I don't think it's my imagination. I'm just going to straighten that up. Yeah, it certainly does. Oh, that looks fine. So I think that's good. I've got my position roughly correct, I believe. The position of this... Um, this piece controls the height, the, it controls the release of the shutter. It controls where this thing will sit when the shutter is cocked. And so it, if it sits l lower or higher than it should do, then it means that your image may be correctly focused at the film plane, but it will show incorrectly on the focusing screen. And the image at the focusing screen and 
at the film plane must match otherwise you're going to have trouble. That's the joy of a single lens reflex camera that you can tell what's happening at the film plane or a good substitute. Just ran that lock screw back down. It's not tight. I just broke, took it to the bottom of its threads and left it there. Backed it off a bit. I don't want it to be tight, but I do want it to be somewhere like the correct position because I don't want it rattling loose or falling out while I'm busy trying to put the camera together. So now I can put this baffle back in position. That's good. Check those two screws in here that I've done them up tight. That's good. So that part's all done for now. The return, the spring that goes on this arm that I removed earlier, I'm not putting that back yet. I know I'm only likely to end up with it damaged or lost if I put it on early. So I'm leaving that right off. So that, as far as I'm concerned, the mirror control gear all looks good. I'm going to take a bit of molybdenum and paste. Just run it on the shafts that those springs are on and that the levers run on. Everything's working quite smoothly there. That's good. It doesn't need any more than that. The problem with this had been that there was excess of grease and that the grease had dried out and gone sticky. So grease is a wonderful thing when it's fresh and new and doing its job, but um, it doesn't stay like that. I'll put the camera back on here now, since we're done with this particular part of the task. And of course the camera back had the dent in the back and the dent was right over the sprocket shaft and so the sprocket had actually cut into the back at that stage, that place. It uh, couldn't cut right through the back but it cut a little groove into it right there. There's actually two layers of aluminium here. There's an inner layer and an outer layer. There was no danger it was going to cut all its way all the way through and create a problem. That's all quite good. I'm going to put a little bit of molybdenum paste on this back catch while I'm here because it doesn't snap into place as smoothly as I'd like. So I'll just run a little bit on there on that tab. Now that feels a lot better. So far so good. Now I've got to get my other parts back from the degreaser and then they can go into the ultrasonic cleaner and then I'll put them back in the body and I want the body all complete ready to put the shutter back on it.